Hello everybody, in this video we're going to be covering one of the sections from chapter 9, Electrons and Atoms and the Periodic Table. In this section we're going to learn more about the electromagnetic spectrum. Uh, you've probably seen before uh, a picture where we have like light that passes through a prism and it's separated out into a rainbow. This is what we call a continuous spectrum, meaning that there's no break in it anywhere. And what's happening in this process is the white light that contains many different wavelengths of light is being separated out by its wavelength. And that is what determines the color that we see. So, as we've seen, uh, light is going to be determined by its wavelengths, and wavelength is related to its frequency. Um, so, again, the color is also related to the frequency of the light. Uh, white light is a mixture of all of the colors, and that is what we would call a spectrum. Uh, and there's this little uh, like saying here that helps us to remember what the order is. It's the Roy G. Biv red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. When an object is colored, that's because it absorbed some of the wavelengths of white light and reflected others. The colors that it reflected merge together and that's what gives that object its overall color. There are many different forms of electromagnetic radiation. Um, that cover the entire spectrum of wavelengths, uh, starting all the way down at the bottom with r uh, radio waves. Those are any ones that have a wavelength that is larger than 0.01 meters. Um, next, we're going to have microwaves, and we can see that you know radio waves. We use this for transmission of like uh, the sound that comes out of your car and stuff like that on your radio and, and cell phones and stuff. Um, and that can't really, uh, it doesn't really have enough energy to do much, right? It's not going to hurt us or anything. But next you're going to see microwaves. This is what your microwave use, uses. And it actually has enough energy to cause molecules to start to spin and rotate. And that's what actually causes things to heat up in the microwave. You're, you're targeting the water molecules. You're making them move and spin around. And that actually starts to generate heat. Next is infrared or IR radiation, and this is what we typically um, associate with like radiant heat, like a radiant heater or uh, heat that can come out of your oven after you turn it off is still, that's infrared radiation that's being um, given off. Then we have the visible light that we see. After that, we have ultraviolet light. Certain... Uh, light sources give off ultraviolet light fluorescent lights give off a little bit of ultraviolet light the sun gives off a lot of uv light um, and it actually is responsible for the burns that we get from the sun next are x-rays um, you've probably seen this in like a medical context or something like that uh, and it actually has quite a bit of uh, energy it's able to permeate through most of the tissue in your body but not your bones and then anything that has a wavelength that's less than 10 to the negative 10 meters, very high energy uh, rays, are called gamma rays. We can picture this uh, in this electromagnetic spectrum here. We can see that as we move along, the uh, wavelengths get smaller and smaller. The frequency would go higher and higher. Uh, and we can see that the visible light that we see is only a small sliver of this. And that is covered in here. Uh, so it's kind of like we're taking this small sliver and expanding it out. So all of the wavelengths between about 750 nanometers to 400 nanometers, uh, we can see with our eyes. So we've talked about how light uh, is a wave and it travels as a wave. But it is also a particle, which is a bit of a contradiction. 
Um, but it's basically just the way it is. And, and a lot of really smart scientists in the 20th century showed that this was true and that these, uh, the light is made out of particles, which they called, uh, photons. Um, a lot of people remember Albert Einstein for like relativity and stuff, E equals MC squared, but he actually won the Nobel prize for, uh, the electrophoto effect, which is where he showed that when photons strike certain materials, electricity can be given off, which is the basis for uh, solar panels that we have now. Uh, a really smart guy by the name of Max Planck really is the one who solidified a lot of what we now understand about photons. Each of the wavelengths of light is comprised of photons that have different amounts of energy right because the energy is related to the wavelength uh the wavelength of life is light is going to determine how much energy these particles have short wavelength light so high frequency light has photons with high energy high frequency light has photons with high energy uh, radio wave photons have the lowest energy and gamma ray photons have the highest energy. And it's important to note that high energy electromagnetic radiation can potentially damage biological molecules. This is why we need to have sunscreen. This is why in the medical context people wear those lead vests to protect themselves from x-rays. Uh, and this is why uh, we are very careful with like nuclear power plants and stuff because they're capable of producing what we call ionizing radiation. This is able to produce ions and destroy uh, biological tissue. I have a little exercise here. I'd like for you guys to take microwaves, gamma rays, uh, green light, red light, and ultraviolet light and arrange them uh, first by wavelength from the shortest to the longest, by frequency from low to high, and by energy from the least to the most. I'll give you a moment to do that. Now we can see our answers. We'll see that by wavelength, gamma, waves, gamma rays are gonna have the shortest wavelength, then UV, followed by green, red, and then microwaves. By frequency, uh, we're going to see the exact opposite trend because they're inverse to one another, right? When they have a uh, short wavelength, they're going to have a high frequency. So we see the opposite order there. And we'll see that energy follows the same pattern as frequency. As the frequency goes up, so does the energy. Let's talk a little bit about light's relationship to matter. Uh, atoms can acquire extra energy. This could be like electrical energy or thermal energy. Um, there's lots of different ways that we can energize matter. Uh, but they can't just store it indefinitely. When they have that extra energy, they're going to have to admit it. And this is usually done in the release of light. Atoms, though, they don't emit all the colors, only very specific wavelengths. And uh, we can actually use that as like a fingerprint for that type of matter. And by analyzing its spectrum, we can figure out uh, what element we have. Uh, here we have a picture of like some like neon type signs that's done by putting different gases in there and then charging them with electrical energy. Here's an example of like a laboratory setup where we fill this tube with a certain gas and then charge it with uh, electricity and it emits uh, photons of a specific frequency. So in this case, instead of the continuous um, spectrum that we saw with the white light example, what's going to wind up happening is we're going to separate out all the wavelengths and only specific wavelengths are going to come out and we're going to get this discrete spectrum afterwards meaning that it doesn't have all of the different wavelengths in it, but instead very clean spectral lines. This is what we can use to identify what kind of gas is inside of the tube. 
Here's some examples here. You can see the continuous example with the white light spectrum. Here is what we would have if we had hi uh, hydrogen. Here's what we would have if we had helium. And this is an example of neon. Um, the fact that we have more and more electrons in each of these is the reason why these uh, spectrums start to get to be more and more complicated. There's two ways that this is done experimentally. You can do an absorption spectrum, meaning that we're going to uh, bombard a sample with uh, light of every different type of uh, wavelength, separate that out, and then we're going to see what made it through. Okay, so we're kind of getting the reverse of this spectrum here. We're seeing just what it was able to absorb. Or you can have an emission spectrum. If you can, in some reasonable way, get it to start emitting light, we can separate that out and then see what the uh, spectrum looks like. So here you can see that the absorption spectrum uh, in this case is everything but what it absorbed. So it is kind of the inverse of this emission spectrum here.